Congressman, good to see you again. Good to see you. Why Denton for this field here? Well, North Texas, we've been pushing for a health care focus in North Texas for a you know, year now that I've been on the committee. Because you think about the various health care needs that we've got, how North Texas is so diverse and how it represents basically every area of the country. But more specifically, the health care services that we have provided here, you know, we are at uh, Global Medical Resources right now that's, that's located in Denton. And the focus of this hearing is on, on emergency access, you know, emergency care access. And you look around this, 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 this hangar and you see all the different vehicles. This uh, company services over 40 states and their emergency services needs. So having it in North Texas with all of our providers, with all of our needs and, and all of our solutions, I thought was really important. Let's talk about solutions. When, yeah. when people think about, about the state of health care, there's a lot of issues that, that yeah. need to be solved. But the first thing I think of is the rural areas that are losing the hospitals. Yeah. That seems to be a county issue or a local issue. Is there a federal role there? Well, when you look at the hospitals that are losing, they're losing um, uh, the, the rural areas that are losing their, their hospitals, one of the reasons is reimbursement rates and how costly it is to provide health care. You know, while may, more people may have access to health insurance, it doesn't mean they've got access to health care. And when the cost is so excessive, that they can't afford it, even if they have, if they're covered by insurance, it's, it's basically the same thing as not having it. But you're, you, it's the, one of the largest um, um, costs per month that people pay for a service they can't even afford to use. One of the problems that we've found, and this is from various uh, roundtables, healthcare roundtables that I've had in this district, what we're hearing from providers is the amount of excessive regulations and the regulatory burdens that are being placed on them by the federal agencies. Like Medicare, Medicaid, those Medicare, things? Medicare, well, what? CMS. The amount okay. of paperwork that they have to do, the amount of administrative work that they have to do. If it's a large healthcare system, they can spread it out. They actually have a whole department that's focused on regulatory issues. But when you look at some of the smaller healthcare systems, when you look at the smaller um, on single uh, solo practitioners, the small group practices, they can't. And as a result, they're either forced to sell to a large healthcare network or go out of business. Washington, D.C. has plenty of huge committee rooms. Yeah. Why, why come out here to yeah. an airplane hangar and have you know a dozen and a half members of Congress to listen to witnesses here when you could just as easily have them go to D.C.? It's, it's so much better to get out of D.C. I think so often people who work in D.C., who are elected and go up to D.C., forget that there's the rest of the country and getting outside of the Beltway and coming into people's backyards. It's amazing the difference when you have that intimidation of the hearing room and you've got the witnesses that are coming into our, you know, our backyard versus going into theirs. You hear their testimony, you hear some of the pushback where they've got folks in the audience that are their supporters and that you know, are their family, friends, their employees. Hearing their stories firsthand go by going directly to them and getting outside of DC I think is important. We all represent various uh, various districts. And hearing firsthand and coming to them as opposed to forcing them to come to DC, I think is really important. What do you expect to hear? I think you're gonna hear a lot of stories about you know, some of the issues that, uh, that these providers and these patients have been dealing with with CMS. You get on the regulatory side, the regulatory burdens that are stifling them, that are causing them to not have better quality, not have better access, you know, not, not have lower costs, but are really the regulatory issues that are doing nothing more than, than preventing all of those things from happening um, and preventing um, them from being able to actually invest further in, in health care quality and in, in patient services. So much of what we see coming out of CMS is, is, a, is a hit to healthcare providers. It's not doing anything for the patient. It's actually preventing healthcare providers from being able to service their patients because their head is stuck in a computer, it's stuck in a keyboard, it's stuck in a screen. And I ask this question when I have our healthcare roundtables, I ask our providers, how much of your time is spent face to face with your patient? And when when you I hear I've I've heard like 40% and I say, well, hold on, when you go to talk to a patient, don't count the time that you're having to type in their answers, but literally the time that you're talking to them. That number goes down to 15 to 25 percent, and it's a direct result of them having to play CYA with the insurance companies and CMS to make sure that they're filling out the paperwork correctly. It's got nothing to do with, with quality of care. What could the federal government do, though? Cut the red tape? I mean, what kind Cut of, the red tape, absolutely. What, what kind of bills do you expect to come out of this? Well, we have a No Transparency Act, for example, that got passed. The idea, and we had a ton of support for it, the idea was to provide transparency to patients when they were looking at their health care options to make sure that they knew what the costs were going to be. What we have found, though, in the last three years is how that, that, that bill 
has been uh, articulated, how it's being um, executed by CMS, is completely against the intent of the law. So making sure that we're holding the agencies that have to do with healthcare, for example, CMS, accountable for how they're actually implementing our regulations is important. How they're implementing the law, the intent of the law is important. And I think you're going to hear from, from witnesses today that I've heard from um, at various roundtables in North Texas, the way that CMS is implementing these laws is not with the intent, it's not helpful, it doesn't do anything to help the, the, their patient care, but does everything to increase costs, to increase time of, of, uh, of, of patient access, and to de decrease access. Congresswoman, thank you for the time. Thank you very much, good to have you here.